Hello everybody! In this video we're going to be looking again at table derivations and this time we're going to be focusing on the all pointed at a physical table table derivation. So without further ado let's get started. I'm here in table derivation.xlsx and I'm in the derive all PT table, PT standing for physical table. So we just looked at the respectful derivations, right, which are going to be very, very useful for um, our aggregation iterators. Now we're going to focus on the non-respectful derivations, and these are going to be really super duper useful for the, uh, the filter iterator, and we will need to manipulate the filters. So um, there's two flavors of these, uh, and they both use the all function. The top one, you point at just an entire physical table and you get back all the rows and all the columns of that table. It completely ignores the filters and brings back all the columns. In a second, we'll look at this one right here, which brings back all the distinct values of one particular column. But right now, we're just going to focus on this one. And like I said, this is a non-respectful filter. So when we add filters to the filter context, this uh, derivation won't care at all. So let's go ahead and simulate that. So here for problem number one, we're going to start by revising the filters. Brian, I don't think revising the filters is going to have any effect. You're correct. Revising the filters will have no effect on this. But I just want to prove that to you. So select these two cells right here. Click and drag these up and drop it right there to create a new filter contest with a filter for shift equals lunch. Right? And now we're going to go get uh, this derivation right here. Go get all the rows in the mini table. And this all derivation, right, is a non-respectful derivation. So it doesn't care about this filter. So as far as these two derivations are concerned, uh, whatever filter is in here doesn't actually affect the way that the uh, physical tables in the data model look to them. So when we ask for this derivation, even though there's a filter for shift equals lunch, we're going to get back all the lunch and dinner rows. We're going to get back everything. So select that cell to that cell. Control C to copy. Click under the O and hours. Control Alt V to pay special. Click on values and number formatting and hit OK. All right. And we get back all the rows and columns of the mini table. Okay, now I think you see where this is going, but we're going to do it uh, anyways, right? We're going to keep revising the filters, and every time we do, we're going to get back the same result because this derivation ignores the filters in the filter context. Speaking of which, let's go add a filter for shift equals dinner. So select those two cells, and since we already have a filter for shift equals lunch, this will replace the existing filter. So drag it right on top of the old filter, let go. It says, do you want to replace it? We're going to say, we sure do. Hit OK. And now, uh, what does the data model look like to this all derivation? Well, the all derivation, right, all pointed at a table, doesn't care about the filters in the filter context, so the mini table still looks like this. So when we use this derivation, we're just going to get all the rows in the, in the table, regardless of what's in the filter context. The filters would imply that we're just looking at dinner, but this derivation is going to ignore that. So we're going to select all those cells right there. Control C to copy. Click under the O in hours. Control Alt V to pay special values and number formats, and click OK. There we go. If we asked for uh, this derivation, given this filter context or any filter context, we get back this temp table. Okay. Let's revise the filters again. Let's add a filter for dish equals burger or salad. Right. Go ahead and drop that up there. Okay. But again, this is a non-respectful derivation, so it doesn't care what filters are in the filter context. So we're going to get the same darn thing, all the rows and columns of the mini table. So let's select all these. Control C to copy, click under the O and hours, Control Alt V to pay special, values and number formats, and click OK. And once again, regardless of what filters are in our filter context, uh, this derivation will bring back all the rows and columns of the mini table as a temp table for us to work with. OK, let's add yet another filter. This time, this is going to be a filter for shift equals lunch or dinner. There's already a filter for shift equals dinner. Let's go ahead and replace the existing filter. By dropping it right on top, it says, hey, there's already data there. Is that okay? Do you want to replace it? We sure do, although it doesn't really matter here. I'm going to scroll down, and this derivation could care less about what filters are in the filter context. So we're going to select all these cells. Control-C to copy. Click under the O and hours. Control-Alt-V to pay special. Click on values and number formats, and click OK. Right? Okay, uh, I think you see where this is going, but we're just going to keep doing it, just because it's really good to get this idea in your head. Let's revise the filters again, add a filter for units equals one by dragging it right up there. I'm going to put it sort of not right next to dish, but kind of up there. Let go. Okay. And now because we're using the all derivation pointed at a table, it doesn't care about the filters. So we still get the exact same thing, right? So we select all those. Control C to copy it. Click there. Control Alt V to pay special. Click on values and number formats and hit OK. 
right? And we'll do one last one. We're going to revise the filters one last time. And, and even though it's not going to have any effect whatsoever, we're just going to do it. So let's go uh, select these cells right here. We're going to override the filter for units, add this new filter. We already have a filter for units. This will replace the old one. So let's select and drag that on top of units. It says there's already data there. Do you want to replace it? We're going to say we sure do. And we're also going to add a filter for dish equals burger and pasta. So select those and drop this on top of the existing filter for dish equals burger or salad, right? We're going to go ahead and hit OK to replace that. But again, because the derivations we're working with right here don't care about what filters are in the filter context, none of this is going to matter. We're going to get all the rows and all the columns of the mini table. That's what this derivation does. It ignores the filters. So one last time, we select those cells, Control C, click right there, do Control Alt V to pay special, and click on values and number formatting, right? And hit OK. Now, uh, it may seem like this is redundant, and it is. Uh, what we've just done, we've done a lot of the same exact thing twice. Every time we do it, because we're using a non-respectful derivation, we get the same results. But it's quite meaningful to sort of bury this into your head and start to understand it, because we're going to use this derivation to create more complex dynamic override filters in the future. So it's going to be very, very valuable to be able to pull up all the rows and columns of a table, regardless of what the current filters are, so we could create a new set of filters uh, designed just to our specifications. Okay, well, we're almost through our tour of the derivations here, but we've got one more. So let's go ahead and see that in the next video.